Hi, welcome to Chord Calculus. Chord Calculus is an application for the multi-instrumentalist. Whether you're a guitar player, a banjo player, a uke player, experienced or brand new at any of these instruments, Chord Calculus gives you tools to look for chords, scales, identify fingerings on the guitar, and hear progressions played on each of the instruments. Let me introduce you to Chord Calculus's panel. On the right hand side we have selectors for instruments and for filters. These allow you to choose what you're going to play and what notes you're going to hear. In the center is an interactive fretboard for visualizing and hearing sounds and on the left are selectors for the root, the chord, and scale types. There are four modes, chords, scales, identify, and progressions. You choose those with the selector at the top. Let's first choose an instrument. In this case, it's currently set for mandolin. Let's go to the guitar family, and you can see that there are guitars with all sorts of tunings and with different numbers of strings. We have ukuleles, banjos, mandolins, and the folk family. Later on, we'll show you how you can add your own instruments. Whatever instrument is chosen, you get to see, in, see its tuning. Let's choose the guitar. We're in chord mode now and we'll see the chords displayed on the fretboard. We get to control the way the chords are displayed with a number of filters. This is the span filter. It controls how many frets a given chord will span. And this is the collection of primary filters. The first row are the chord tone filters. These allow chords to be displayed that might be missing a third, a fifth, or the root. The second row are the fretted string filters which control which strings must be played or can be allowed to be muted. And the bottom row are specialty filters tied to a given instrument. For the guitar, they're showing the set that are displayed, and we'll explain those in a little bit. In chord mode, we choose a root and a chord type from the lists here. And what's displayed are all possible chords. Notice that for an A major, there are 495 ways to display that chord or to play that chord. The up-down arrow selectors let you walk one by one through all the possible chord fingerings and can be played by either hitting the chord or the arpeggio button. You can also move chords up or down the neck by sliding your finger up or down the neck and they'll move in proportion to how far you slide. Again, you can play them at the position they're at. Chords are represented on the fretboard either with red circles with the chord tone number. If the string is muted, there's an X at the nut, and if the string is played open, the chord tone is displayed at the nut. In addition to being able to slide your finger down the fretboard, you can slide across and the chord will follow where your finger has drawn, or at least as close as it can. Tapping one finger on the fretboard will display all the chord tones for the current note with the particular chord circled in black. You can cycle through the chords or tap the fretboard again to clear out and just see the chord. Now let's see how the filters affect which chords are displayed. The fretted string filters generally reduce the number of chords displayed. The no open string filter prevents chord from being displayed that require open strings. The no dead string filter removes any chord that requires a dead or unplayed string. The no widow filter eliminates any chord that has an unplayed string between two played strings, be they opened or fingered. It avoids having to mute notes in a chord and it's better for beginner players. Notice that in this chord, the unplayed string is on the outside, so it still shows up as a valid chord. The tone string selector allows you to control how the chord is played by controlling which chord tone resides on which strings. Note you have selector buttons. Clicking one brings up a selector screen. Tapping a string forces chords that only have that chord tone, in this case the root, on the highest string. 
and you'll only be able to see, in this case, the root tone on the sixth string. Although the filters continue to work, locking us to having a high root note. We can select other chord tones to appear on other strings, and provided that there are valid chords, they'll show up in that control. Turning off the filter turns off the restriction. The guitar also has other special filters. The low four filter will only play chords that are on the lowest four strings. The high four filter only plays chords on the high four strings. This is for jazz stylings. The bar core filter provides you with barable chords. Note that the display of the index finger is as a line. And finally, the slide guitar filter will display chords that are playable on a slide guitar, like a lap steel, so all notes must lie on the same fret. It really doesn't account for thing like bar, things like bar tilts. The fret span control allows us to reduce the number of chords displayed by controlling how many frets across which a chord can span. Notice there are 294 varieties for a major 7 flat 5, but if we reduce the span, it goes down to 144, making it easier to play the chord for people with smaller hands or with people having difficulty in stretching. And again, down to two frets, and we have very few chords that are playable uh, with that restriction. Another major feature for chord calculus is its ability to have capos on the fretboard. That's the, the capo button, allows us to place a capo on the neck, and then all chords and other representations are relative to that capo. Anything we saw before with chords works with capos. We can slide the capo up and down again to change where it is on the neck and change the chords. Additionally, we can put in for guitars multiple capos. Uh, why would you want a multiple capo? Well, if you double tap the capo, you now get a selection for the type of the second capo. In this case, this is a partial capo like Trace Bundy or Willie Porter might use. Very handy for those that want to try experimenting with multiple capos. Removing a capo simply means sliding it away or sliding the button to get the capos off of the neck. That about covers chord mode. Now let's look at scale mode. Hitting the S above the fretboard puts us into scale mode. Now we see a display of scale types, the root, and the filters are gone because they really don't apply in the case of scales. Right now the root selected is A, select the major, and now we see all the chord tones for the A major scale displayed on the neck. Tapping the root now gives us a two octave scale. Notice that the notes are highlighted, and the reason for that is that sometimes when we get a scale like this one, we have to double back, and this gives us an indication that we have to go back to catch the last two notes of the scale dropping down. We can, with re-entrant tuning like ukuleles, we still get full scales even though we start on a higher first string. Another feature in scale mode is if you select one of the Greek modes, you also get to see the base scale of which it's derived. So the Dorian in A is really derived from the major G scale. And again, selecting the root plays that scale. Another feature of the interactive fretboard is if you tap with two fingers, the display switches from chord tone to the actual note and back again. So you can actually see where the notes are played and can hear them as well, again tapping on the root to define a two octave scale. And again, you can use capos in scale mode and the scale will adjust relative to the capo still maintaining the same desired root. Let's now explore identify mode. 
you often find yourself in the situation of playing a pleasant sounding chord and having no idea what it is you just played. You can do that in chord calculus by placing the same notes on the virtual fretboard and the program will tell you all the possible ways that you could spell that chord along with which notes might be missing uh, in the full chord. The notes you played are circled in black and as you select one of those possible spellings all of the chord tones are displayed for that particular spelling. Again, you can play back the chord or arpeggio that you introduced. You can drag the note to a new position and get a new set of possible names for chords. Tapping the fingerboard will clear that out. The final operating mode is progression mode. Progression mode allows you to choose a root and a progression. It's very similar to the chord mode and all the same filters are available. You choose a root and then click the progression button and a set of possible chord progressions are displayed. Choosing one of them will now load up for that particular root the chords that would be played one after the other for that particular progression. A new play button is displayed in and in this case, you play each of the chords in succession, effectively on three virtual fretboards. If you change the key, the chords change. And again, you get to play them in sequence, either as three chords or as three arpeggios. Each of those fretboards is independently accessible. Again, here you can play the arpeggios. Swiping across moves the position of the chord. Selecting the next virtual window gives you a, the ability to change the chord positions independently on, in this case, the three necks. And then, once you've positioned them where you want them, play them back, and they'll come back in the positions that you chose. More frequently, you want to keep your hand from moving up and down the neck, and that's where the centroid lock works. It tries to keep the cords from moving from one neck to the next, so that in a sense your hand doesn't have to move up and down the neck while you play. In this particular case, there's not a lot of good chord choices, uh, so we get a lot of bouncing around in this particular selection for the E. Let's pick a jazz 6251 progression. It's at the bottom of the list. And let's see how the centroid lock helps us. We'll sweep across. So we tend to say around the fifth fret. We can change that from a, what we call the fixed mode, where everything tries to stay around the fifth fret. To the dynamic centroid which will move from chord to chord so we get more flow in small steps up the neck in this case. So that's it for all the operational characteristics of chord calc in the various in the four modes. Now let's look at ways in which we can customize chord calc. This is the control panel you hit the selector in the upper right hand corner and all these features are adjustable. You can adjust the playback speed for chords and arpeggios. You can adjust the volume. You can also add new instruments. You start with the instrument that you had currently selected. In this case it was an octave mandolin. You get to hear what it sounds like with this tuning. For an octave mandolin tuned to a banjo, we would have an Irish tenor banjo. So let's create an Irish tenor banjo. It's a long neck, so we'll reduce the span. It's going to be a banjo family. It's going to have a banjo sound. And we have to give it a new name to be in the selector list. So we use the virtual keyboard. And we're going to call this an Irish tenor banjo. It's still a GDAE instrument. It's tuned the same as an octave mandolin, but it's going to have a banjo voice. You can control the actual notes, change them to retune and create a, a retuned instrument. We go back to the banjo family and select our newly created Irish tenor banjo. You need to go in and select a root 
and a chord. And now we can play Irish tenor banjo sound, either chords or arpeggios. Move up and down the neck and hear how that sounds differently than the guitar or if we're by the regular mandolin. Note that the difference in sound from the guitar. So the ability to create a whole new set of instruments well beyond what's currently in chord calc. You can also add new progressions to the progression mode using a progression editor. This allows you to add progressions in any key. So the um, set of notes really is Roman numerals and the chord type is a list here. Either enter, remove, clear all, cancel, or say OK. You pick a chord tone, you pick a chord type, in this case it's the one minor 7 flat 5. Now you go ahead and pick the next code. In this case it's going to be the flat 7 dominant. Now you have the two chords in the sequence, say OK, go to progression mode, pick a root, and at the bottom of the list there's our new progression. And we can play it. Changing the key. And again, turning on the centroid lock. Another pair of tools are the settings and configurations modes. Settings allows you to keep all of the current settings of your filters, of your instrument, saved as a, a, config, a setting in a file on the iPad or iPhone. Note here this is a no open and high four setting. We change that. Go back and create a new setting with a new name. Save that. So there's our low four. Turn it off. Go back to the settings. Now read in a previous setting and our low 4 comes back. Very handy if you're going to be doing the same thing multiple times. And again you can switch back and forth. There's our open, no open and high 4. That's settings. In addition there are configurations and the configurations allow you to capture what's been stored in the selectors for new instruments and for new progressions. And each configuration has its own set of settings. So configuration is the higher level structure that you save, and within it there'll be a set of settings. So here we drop back and forth, and we can either see or not see, depending on which set which configuration we choose, our new set of chords and our new set of instruments. You may want to clear out either the progression or the instrument you set, and that's what Edit Tables allows you to do, clearing and adjusting those two tables. And then if you wanted to save those back into a new configuration, you can. So that's it for Chord Calc, Chord Calculus. Everything is in there. If you don't have an iPad, there is Chord Calculus for the iPhone. The difference here is we don't have all the property of an iPad, so the three segments of the display are broken up into three separate screens. Left screen being the selector, the center screen being the fretboard, and the right screen being the filters and instrument selectors. Everything else works just the same. There are some minor perturbations on where displays are. For instance, we show you the chord that you've selected on the leftmost screen underneath the play button. You still get to play chords and arpeggios with the same play buttons. The filters are also the same. But in progression mode now, you select the root, you select the chord sequence, and now the heads-up display for playing the progression also appears in the center panel, but all the other functions are the same. Getting to play progressions, playing the arpeggios, the centroid lock, the choice of dynamic or fixed mode, all are in the center part of the 
three panels of controls. And then finally, in addition we, to the uh, settings panel, there is also, both in the iPhone and the iPad version, a web type interface for showing you instructions with an escape button in the upper left hand corner. So here you have both chord calculus for the iPad and chord calculus for the iPhone. A terrific tool for the multi-instrumentalist.